I suppose we all know that the shortest verse that is a full sentence in our English Bible is Jesus wept. How could two words be more eloquent? But the shortest verse that's a full sentence in our Greek Bible is rejoice evermore. And the beauty of Christianity is that the Lord Jesus has turned the one into the other. He's the one who's going to wipe away every tear. He's the one who is exchanging the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And so weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. It's going to be a really happy ending to our wilderness journey when we see him at last. It's going to be wonderful, isn't it? I have the privilege of traveling to uh, a couple of local state prisons and teaching the Word of God to a group of men, most of whom are very serious students. They love the Lord, they love his Word, and they spend their time going in on suicide watch, into death row, into the section where those who are lifers are getting old and dying, and they love these people and they pour the gospel into their hearts. And it's just a great privilege to be able to share with them some things that might be helpful in these ministries. Well, I was talking a little bit, and when we've talked before about this, the idea that we pray more than we know. The psalmist in Psalm 56 verse 8 reminds us that the Lord captures our tears in his bottle and records the reason for them in his book. And why? Because his intention is to solve that problem, to deal with that sorrow. And likewise, in Psalm 5, we read in verses 1 and 2, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry. For to you I pray. And so the Lord, he not only hears our words, He hears our sighs. He hears our groans. He hears our desires, our longings, even our dreams. And the Lord responds. A mother doesn't wait until her baby can articulate in perfect English what she needs. The mother is always reading the baby and seeing the needs, anticipating. As we read, the Lord says, before they call, I will answer. He's anticipating our needs, and responding very often, even before we ask. And so the Lord is listening to this whole array of information, if you will, that's coming up from us into the presence of the Lord. And I I think it's important for us to lay hold of this, that God doesn't just hear formal prayers. Not that we shouldn't pray. He should hear our words. But there are many times, as uh, Romans 8 explains, well, we don't, we don't even know what to pray for. We're, we're at a loss for words. But the Lord, by the Spirit, translates this into groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, this is nonverbal communication. And God's an expert at it. Well, I spoke about that the first week. And then the next week, One of the field ministers, as they're called, his name's Tommy, he came over to see me, and he had something to share. We sat down, and he opened up the Bible to John chapter 11, and he read to me these words. Verse 33, therefore, when Jesus saw her, that's Mary, weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And then that famous verse, Jesus wept. And the Jews said, see how he loved him. They got the message too. They were translating, as it were, the nonverbal expressions of his love. And then a little later on, we read this again. Verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. 
And then we read this in verse 41. They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He hadn't said a word to his father. He had groaned. He had wept. He had groaned again. And his father understood exactly what he was saying. He felt the heavy weight that death places on a person. And no doubt was able to think of all the graves and all the sorrow, all the tears that had flowed through the centuries. And he groaned in himself. And then he groaned again. You know, the scripture says to weep with those who weep. It's a special art. And we mingle our tears and they become a voice to the heart of God. He hears them and he responds. And so the Lord Jesus says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. What a wonderful truth this is. Revealed to this dear man sitting in prison, pouring over the scriptures and hearing the voice of the Spirit reveal to him this glorious truth that God heard his son, heard his groans, heard his weeping, and he hears yours too. 